The Divine Inspiration of the Bible by Arthur W. Pink. Chapter 9. The miraculous power of the Bible shows forth that its inspirer is the Almighty. 1. The power of God's word to convict men of sin. In Hebrews 4.12 we have a scripture which draws attention to this peculiar characteristic of the Bible. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The writings of men may sometimes stir the emotions, search the conscience, and influence the human will, but in a manner and degree possessed by no other book, the Bible convicts men of their guilt and lost estate. The Word of God is the divine mirror, for in it man reads the secrets of his own guilty soul and sees the vileness of his own evil nature. In a way absolutely peculiar to themselves, the scriptures discern the thoughts and intents of the heart and reveal to men the fact that they are lost sinners and in the presence of a holy God. Some thirty years ago there resided in one of the temples of Tibet a Buddhist priest who had conversed with no Christian missionary, had heard nothing about the cross of Christ, and had never seen a copy of the Word of God. One day, while searching for something in the temple, he came across a translation of Matthew's Gospel, which years before had been left there by a native who had received it from some traveling missionary. His curiosity aroused, the Buddhist priest commenced to read it, but when he reached the eighth verse in the fifth chapter, he paused and pondered over it. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Although he knew nothing about the righteousness of his Maker, although he was quite ignorant concerning the demands of God's holiness, yet he was there and then convicted of his sins, and a work of divine grace commenced in his soul. Month after month went by, and each day he said to himself, I shall never see God, for I am impure in heart. Slowly but surely the work of the Holy Spirit deepened within him until he saw himself as a lost sinner, vile, guilty, and undone. After continuing for more than a year in this miserable condition, the priest one day heard that a foreign devil was visiting a town nearby and selling books which spoke about God. The same night the Buddhist priest fled from the temple and journeyed to the town where the missionary was residing. On reaching his destination, he sought out the missionary and at once said to him, Is it true that only those who are pure in heart will see God? Yes, replied the missionary. But the same book which tells you that also tells you how you may obtain a pure heart. And then he talked to him about our Lord's atoning work and how the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us all from sin. Quickly the light of God flooded the soul of the Buddhist priest, and he found peace which passeth all understanding. Now what other book in the world outside of the Bible contains a sentence or even a chapter which, without the aid of any human commentator, is capable of convincing and convicting a heathen that he is a lost sinner? Does not the fact of the miraculous power of the Bible, which has been illustrated by thousands of fully authenticated cases similar to the above, declare that the scriptures are the inspired word of God, vested with the same might as their omnipotent author? 2. The power of God's word to deliver men from sin. A single incident which must be brought before the notice of the reader must suffice to illustrate the above-mentioned truth. Some forty years ago, a Christian gentleman stood upon the quay of the Liverpool dock distributing tracts to the sailors. In the course of his work, he handed one to a man who was just embarking on a voyage to China, and with an oath, the sailor took it, crumpled it up, and thrust it into his pocket. Some three weeks after, the sailor was down in his cabin and needed a spell with which to light his pipe. 
felt in his pocket for the necessary paper, and drew out the little tract which he had received in Liverpool. On recognizing it, he uttered a terrible oath and tore the paper in pieces. One small fragment adhered to his tarry hand, and glancing at it, he saw these words, Prepare to meet thy God. When relating the incident to the writer, he said, It was at that moment as though a sword had pierced my heart. Prepare to meet thy God rang again and again in his ears, and with a stricken conscience he was tormented about his lost condition. Presently he retired for the night, but sleep he could not. In desperation he got up and dressed, and went above and paced the deck. Hour after hour he walked up and down, but try as he might he could not dismiss from his mind the words, Prepare to meet thy God. For years this man had been a helpless slave in the grip of strong drink, and knowing his weakness, he said, How can I prepare to meet God when I am so powerless to overcome my besetting sin? Finally he got down upon his knees and cried, O oh God, have mercy on me! Save me from my sins! Deliver me from the power of drink, and help me prepare for the meeting with thee! More than thirty-five years after, this converted sailor told the writer that from the night he had read that quotation from God's word, had prayed that prayer, and had accepted Christ as his Savior from sin, he had never tasted a single drop of intoxicating liquor, and had never once had a desire or craving for strong drink. How marvelous is the power of God's word to deliver men from sin! Truly, as Dr. Torrey has well said, a book which will lift men up to God must have come down from God. 3. The Power of God's Word Over the Human Affections In thousands of instances, men and women have been stretched upon the rack, torn limb from limb, thrown to the wild beasts, and have been burned at the stake rather than abandon the Bible and promise never again to read its sacred pages. For what other book would men and women suffer and die? More than two hundred years ago, when a copy of the Bible was a much more expensive than it is in these days, a peasant who lived in the county of Cork, Ireland, heard that a gentleman in his neighborhood had a copy of the New Testament in the Irish language. Accordingly, he visited this man and asked to be allowed to see it, and after looking at it with great interest, begged to be allowed to copy it. Knowing how poor the peasant was, the gentleman asked him where he would get his paper and ink from. I will buy them, was the reply. And where will you find a place to write? If your honor will allow me the use of your hall, I'll come after my day's work is over and copy a little at a time in the evenings. The gentleman was so moved at this man's intense love for the Bible that he gave him the use of his hall and light, and provided him with paper and ink as well. True to his purpose and promise, the peasant labored night after night until he had written out a complete copy of the New Testament. Afterwards, a printed copy was given to him, and the written testament is preserved by the British and Foreign Bible Society. Again we ask, what other book in the world could obtain such a hold upon the affections and win such love and reverence and produce such self-sacrificing toil?